Hello everyone. The Lakers shocked everyone in the NBA, many expected them to acquire Bruce Brown in free agency, but as you may know, they signed an impressive wing, Torian Prince. For those unfamiliar, Prince, at 29, is entering his eighth season in the NBA. With career averages of 10.4 points and 3.7 rebounds, he shot 42.1% from the field and an impressive 37.2% from three-point range. Surprisingly, the Lakers won by just $4.5 million in a six-month exception. Prince embodies the perfect fusion of defense and dynamic three-point shooting, a blend that teams across the league covet. His multifaceted defensive prowess enables him to guard positions ranging from the shooting guard to the power forward efficiently. When it comes to his offensive capabilities, Prince's lightning-fast catch-and-release technique stands out, arguably making it one of the most rapid and efficient in the entire league. Teaming up with the likes of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, Prince is poised to enjoy a plethora of open-shot opportunities, given the attention the duo commands. There's been a pervasive narrative regarding the so-called Lakers three-point shooting curse, but Prince, with his consistent track record, seems primed to debunk that myth. It's worth highlighting that in his seven-season career, Prince has dipped below the 35% three-point shooting mark in only two instances, with one of them being his initial rookie season. What elevates Prince's value even further is his exceptional accuracy from the corner, boasting a remarkable 41.7% conversion rate. Given that a substantial chunk of his shot attempts originate from this pivotal zone on the court, the Lakers have undoubtedly added a sharpshooting gem to their roster. In the constantly shifting landscape of the NBA, the Lakers have once again demonstrated their strategic prowess by recruiting Torian Prince. For those who may not have closely followed Prince's journey, he represents a significant asset, especially when teamed up with ball-dominant stalwarts like LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Prince's playing style is characterized by a lesser dependence on ball handling, which makes him incredibly efficient in the catch-and-shoot capacity that the Lakers have been actively looking to bolster. Yet, amidst this acquisition, questions about Prince's exact role within the Lakers' intricate system arise. Will he primarily warm the bench, coming in as a strategic replacement, or will he carve a niche for himself within the primary team formation? If the latter, it's intriguing to ponder whose shoes he would potentially fill in the starting lineup. The current buzz hints at Jared Vanderbilt being the player in the crosshairs. For Vanderbilt to firmly secure his spot, it's imperative he elevates his three-point shooting game. The upcoming training camp is set to offer a captivating showdown, the kind that tends to unearth the latent potential in athletes. While Prince's defensive acumen might slightly trail Vanderbilt's, he undoubtedly holds his ground. Coupled with his three-point shooting finesse, there's a strong case to be made for him blending seamlessly with the Lakers starting quintet. It appears the Lakers' management shares this sentiment, especially in light of their intermittent struggles from beyond the arc and the subsequent floor spacing complications, issues that become more pronounced when orchestrating plays around superstars like LeBron and Davis. Securing Prince's services symbolizes a strategic pivot for the team. He embodies the consistent catch-and-shoot dynamism the Lakers yearned for. Initial reactions to his contract raised a few eyebrows, but a deeper dive reveals its value. At a relatively modest $4.5 million, it represents judicious spending. And for those who revel in the thrill of March Madness, Prince's name evokes a flurry of cherished memories from the iconic tournament. For anyone in need of a playful primer on the art of securing a rebound, Torian Prince delivered quite the instructional moment during an unforgettable March Madness interview. When posed with a question about Yale's surprising rebounding advantage over Baylor, Prince humorously articulated the basic mechanics, to simply snatch the ball with both hands as it bounces off the rim. His comical yet candid clarification surely elicited chuckles, but beneath the humor lies Prince's undeniable potential as an asset to the Lakers. The team was actively scouting for a dominant wing player possessing a keen eye for three-point shots, and Prince undoubtedly ticks those boxes. In an unexpected turn of events, the Lakers also welcomed Gabe Vincent into their fold. There was widespread chatter that Vincent, given his sterling performances for the Miami Heat, was destined for another franchise. Rumors swirled about Vincent possibly securing a yearly paycheck between 15 to 25 million. However, in a masterstroke, the Lakers clinched a deal with him, a three-year contract valued at $33 million. This acquisition undeniably stands out as a remarkable feat, especially when one recalls Vincent's instrumental role in steering the Heat to the pinnacle of the NBA Finals. The Heat's calculated shift, transitioning from Kyle Lowry to spotlighting Vincent in their premier lineup, is believed to have reinvigorated the team's dynamics. 
Vincent's fervor and prowess as a point guard drew comparisons to the likes of Dennis Schroeder, a narrative that certainly merits deeper exploration. Vincent, with his relentless defensive energy at the point guard position, never fails to give his utmost on that end of the floor. This brings up an intriguing query, are the Lakers attempting to mirror the defensive intensity Schroeder brought to the table by introducing Vincent into the lineup? Vincent might not fully mirror Schroeder's defensive capabilities, but he appears to align more harmoniously with the Lakers' offensive strategy. Another angle to consider is whether the Lakers are envisioning Vincent as a potential stand-in for D'Angelo Russell. Though the two don't share an identical basketball DNA, Vincent brings a distinct flair to the court. From my perspective, it seems that Vincent is being positioned as the heir apparent to Schroeder, especially in light of the Lakers' financial bind which limited their offer to Schroeder to a mere $3.8 million. One could argue that Schroeder might have been in the mix for the mid-level exception. However, the wind seemed to suggest that he was aiming for a sum greater than the biannual exception at the Lakers' disposal. This financial hurdle redirected the Lakers' sights towards Vincent. While it would have been advantageous to keep Schroeder on board, Vincent emerges as an admirable second choice. Such a strategic shift might even endow the Lakers with added maneuverability, potentially prompting them to ponder over a trade involving Russell should he make a comeback. Vincent's arrival ushers in an era of adaptability for the Lakers. Whether he's dazzling in the spotlight of the starting lineup or injecting energy as a sixth man akin to Schroeder's contributions, he's a valuable asset. Although his regular season three-point accuracy hovers around 33.9%, a closer look at his near 38% shooting during the playoffs provides a more optimistic view of his capabilities. Should he replicate or even elevate this performance under the Lakers' banner, it wouldn't be a stretch to foresee him carving out an indispensable niche in the team's grand scheme. The potential elevation of Vincent to the primary point guard position is a topic of fervent discussion, and this could unfold irrespective of Russell's trajectory with the team. Vincent's youth serves as a compelling advantage over Schroeder. Being close to three years his junior, Vincent presents an enticing prospect for the Lakers, hinting at the possibility of long-term consistent performances. Schroeder's departure might be tinged with a hint of nostalgia for many fans, but the arrival of Vincent ensures that optimism remains. With the attributes he brings to the table, Vincent seems perfectly equipped to step into a role reminiscent of Schroeder's tenure with the Lakers. Now, shifting gears to roster additions, what are your insights on integrating Torian Prince and Gabe Vincent? Dive into the discussion and drop your perspectives in the comments section below. Wrapping up this segment, a massive shout out to our dedicated viewers who stayed with us till the conclusion. If this analysis resonated with you, do us a favor, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to join our community, and make sure to activate the bell icon to stay abreast of all our latest content. Your engagement means the world to us. As always, your viewership is deeply appreciated, and we eagerly await our next interaction in the forthcoming video.